What's up you guys? It's Maddie. I am making another project that is simply massive. I'm gonna try a little bit of a different style with this video where I start working while I talk to you guys about what I'm doing. Let's get to it. Let's make what is, I would say the most absurd thing I've ever made, but then again, most of you probably saw my nine foot long worm, which was indeed the craziest thing I've ever made and the biggest thing I've ever made. This might top that, truly. This is a giant hand pillow. Like it is a hand that is legitimately the scale. Unbelievable. Earlier today, I cut the pattern, pieced it together. Did all of that. I do it with tape just because I don't like using glue. It's just gonna be a wacky project. And I don't know why I keep doing this to myself, just making these like absurdly massive things. So yesterday I went to Joanne and I got a bunch of stuff. This is the fabric that I'm gonna use for the main part of the hand. I love this like composition book looking print. I think this is so cool. And this was a clearance fabric, $2 a yard. So I needed three yards. So that was a pretty good deal. So I got like a fun black and white composition type of, I almost said fiber. I'm so used to saying fiber and yarn that I almost said that. And then for the ruffle cuff, I'm going to use this Harlequin print, this black and white diamond. And then for the fingernails, I needed like a non-stretch velvet. And so we're going like full camp. <laughs> this is giving me like Dracula vibes, vampire vibes. I don't know. We're going like full camp with this. I mean, it's a giant hand. So it, I was between this and going like witchy with it, like purple with a green fingernail. But this is what came to me when I was in Joanne getting creative, so. Making a giant like vampire hand pillow situation. I don't know where I'm gonna keep putting all of these giant things. The worm is gonna have to move over. So let's get to cutting this pattern and prepping it. That's kind of my goals for this afternoon is to cut and prep the pattern. And then, I don't know, we'll see how far I get if I sew anything today. Um, I think that the like construction of this pattern is like fairly straightforward. It's more just the sheer size making it challenging and complicated. So we'll see how that works out. But thank you so much for joining, for clicking on this video. Let's make an absurd giant hand pillow. I should probably iron this. Oh, it's so lazy, I don't want to iron. So I decided not to print out the instructions. I'm just gonna read them on my phone. It's just a lot of pictures, so just easier this way. So it wants me to cut on the bias. Which I think I know what that means. <laughs> I will say that this pattern I think is written for anyone. Like it's pretty beginner friendly. There's a ton of pictures and like she goes through like everything like really in, in a lot of detail. There's also a miniature version of this pattern, which is not miniature at all. It's still very big. And in hindsight, I should have made the smaller version. <laughs> Cause this is huge. I definitely need to get one of those like sewing markers because all I have is this chalk and it kind of sucks. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Is this gonna weight my pattern down? I don't even know. Good enough. I've said this before, but I definitely feel like the process of like prep work for sewing is the hardest like all of the measuring and cutting and patterning and everything like that is like definitely harder to me than just sewing 
All right. So the pattern suggests pinning in like on the inside of the pattern so that when you cut it, it kind of like stays lined up, but like especially in between the fingers. I hope I like this fabric. I kind of picked it on a whim because I don't really work with black and white very often. The only kind of black and white that really gets me going is like the Harlequin style, like the other fabric I showed. But when I saw this on clearance, I was like, you know what? That could be cool and different for me. And it's very macabre, which I love. It was just giving me vampire vibes. And I was thinking what would be kind of funny or cool would be to make it like a vampire hand. And I don't know if anyone has read Dracula, but there's like a scene in Dracula where, in the book where they talk about how Dracula has like hairy palms. I think the line is like, his dank breath and hairy palms. And I just thought it was like funny. I, I, that line has always stuck with me. So then I was like, oh, should I make the hand flesh colored? And should I just lean into that and just make it like a hairy hand? But when I saw this fabric, I was like, no, that's giving like classic vampire-ish type of vibes. So that's what I'm going with. Whatever I'm feeling in the craft store that day and whatever I find in the clearance section typically dictates my choices for projects. Hey, but I... tried to give me about 15, 20,000 an episode, and yeah. I was like, stop, you guys, you guys it's like yeah, overkill. Exactly. Uh, give it to Katja, she's in foreclosure. Right. Um, but so the next step is to burn the edges, but it's definitely fraying on me a little bit. So hopefully it'll be okay. Um, I've cut two nails at this point, and I, obviously I need five, so I'm just gonna keep going. My Joanne did not have like a less stretchy velvet than this. So I literally looked at everything I could find. So I just went with this and I don't know, I guess we'll see. It would be like kind of detrimental to the pillow if this like looked nasty and didn't work. So I've never burned the edges of fabric. So that'll be interesting. We'll go outside in a minute and do that. Three more nails to go. And then all of the like prep work will be done. Oh, it stinks. It stinks. All right, there's one. Done. It's actually easier than I thought it was gonna be, so that's cool. It's not quite as bad as I was expecting. I'm almost done. There's a breeze. It is a few days later now. I am about to make the ruffle cuff. I hate doing this. I have a horrible track record of this where I will break my thread like three quarters of the way through. And if you break your thread, you better get your seam ripper and get to ripping. That is what this is. So for me, this is high stakes. I don't like making ruffles. And in the past I've just used like pre-ruffled trim instead and i'm kind of kicking myself for not just doing that but i do think that the harlequin ruffle will be really cool that is what i'm up to now is making the ruffle and then i think after that is going to be sewing the nails on who else is in the camp of never serviced your sewing machine ever. Just basically gently tug the, I think the top thread, right? This requires like extreme patience because you only can do so much at a time. This is basically what you do the whole way down. You just like scooch it and you just, but it's literally like this much at a time. So the patience is like, it's just very tedious, but that's what I'm going for. And then you sew down along the top of it. So we'll see if I make it. This is quite a big ruffle. And the ones that I have fucked up in the past were for like collars. 
So they were much smaller. The goal is basically to shrink it to the size of the hand or wrist, I guess, width. I think that's probably like the right amount of ruffling and it's gotta happen all the way with one thread living on a prayer with this damn thread. I will check back in with you guys when hopefully I have a ruffle. Check it out. Honestly. <gasps> This would be so cute. Imagine little ruffles. Okay, unfortunately, comparing these, I don't know if it's visible on camera, but this is much more of like a varsity red. And then this is more like burgundy and I just feel like it's going to look bad. So I'm gonna go to Joanne. Second time today. Joanne fit, got my swatch. Well, let's do it. I'm back. <laughs> and I got the thread. Honestly, are you even gonna be able to tell the difference? I don't even know if you could tell the difference. I don't even know if that was worth doing. Also, of course, had to get a little treat. I need to sew this as close to the edge as I can. So this is gonna be intricate sewing for a minute. So I'm probably gonna start sweating any second here. I'm gonna just go super, 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 super slow. <laughs> I feel like I'm edging my sewing machine. Okay, I was a little nervous, but I think it looks good. It's got a little bit of a pucker right here where I connected the stitch, but I think overall it's pretty cunty. I love it. So I'm gonna go do the rest of these um, off camera and I will catch up with you guys when I'm ready to assemble this massive hand. Okay, so now that the nails are done, it's time to line everything up. There's so much junk on this table. I should probably clear some stuff off to make this easier. Why is it so hard to line fabric up? I know that they are the exact same. I cut them together. So why can I never line anything up right? Time to step. Whenever I drink cold brew, I feel insane. I am just a like brewed coffee gal, or like I think I like lattes too. But whenever I drink cold brew, it's like wired. There's legit polyfill flakes everywhere. But that much polyfill got me the fingers. Oh, is this not fucking deranged? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm loving it so much. That was the entire bag of polyfill that I have inside. I have to run and go get ready for dinner to go out with my friends. And then I'm gonna come back, bring the polyfill that's in my car inside tonight, stuff this bad boy and we'll be done. We'll have a giant ass vampire hand. This is one of my favorite shirts from Charbatai. So cute. I wanna show you guys a, a little sneak preview of a potential project that I'm gonna be doing in the next like month or two, maybe sooner, who knows. I just got this pattern in the mail and it's a McCall's pattern for these adorable little like children's playroom, like pillow or like floor cushions, I guess you could say. And I wanna make my dog a cherry pie bed using this pattern. So it's got like, inches of a foam and then it's like fleece on the outside. 
how cute would that be as a dog bed for my dog? So I'm just saying subscribe if you don't want to miss out for future wacky projects. I simply cannot stop finding kooky patterns, both vintage and not online and buying them. So my like physical pattern collection is getting quite large and I just have so many projects that I want to do and there's just not enough time. There's just not enough time. I can only do like one thing a week.